Hi, it's Paul from Model Build International. As usual, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The link is down there. Then you'll get notified of all the new videos. This time we're looking at another kit from Mirage Hobby. This one is the Motorship Batori. This is a 1 500th scale kit of an Allied uh, attack troop transport. So let's see what we get in the box. To start with Motorship Batori, as she was as a troop transport attack ship in July 1943, 1/500 scale. And you can see from the front, the image on the front here, there's um, landing craft in here as well. And probably going to be the same as the earlier kit, where it was a passenger liner with some extra sprues thrown in. So I've had a look around. There's nothing extra on the outside of the box. So let's open it up. First off, the last thing, these last few kits from Mirage Hobby, the sprues are wrapped in bubble wrap, which is a really nice touch. So we'll take that out of there. And then underneath we've got the instructions. So I'll just get rid of the boxes. So first off, the instructions, um, decal sheet attached to the front. There's one there, and there's one on the back as well. So there's two small decal sheets there. Ship's history in Polish and English, and some nice information in there. And then the instructions themselves, you can see it looks like it's sort of a hybrid of some modern instructions and some older ones. So my guess is a lot of these come from sort of the original boxing as a passenger liner, and then they've just added to them in many ways for the um, guns here, landing craft, but to go through and I'll go through these in detail, there's with colour call outs in with Ravel, Humble and Tamiya, and the colours are named in English and Polish as well. And there's quite a few steps, there's nine steps on the double pages, 10, 11, 12, 13 steps in total, they really seem reasonably straightforward. On the back, there's another colour painting guide, as she was in 1943. Um, there's a certain decal here that if it's before July 13th, you have that decal, afterwards you don't. Um, colour schemes for the landing craft as well, which is kind of neat. And written instructions as well about paintings, there's plenty there to go on. So let's open up the bag and see what's inside. The usual link to Barrage Hobby's Facebook page. And then we have basically we've got two bigger sprues and looks like two identical sprues with all the landing craft, ships, boats, all that sort of. These are obviously the extra ones that make it a, a troop ship. Um, looking here, there's no eject pin marks on this side of stuff that would be in the way. Can't see any on that side either. Attachment points look quite nice, pretty small. Um, Lots of parts compressed into a small area on these, um, I'll have to admit. So might be dismantling the sprues with a saw rather than cutting some of the parts out. Some of these small parts I can see easily getting broken if you're not careful. Um, but it should be an issue as such, they look good. I'll have a close look a bit. Um, obviously main decks on this one, a stand. Uh, Attachment points seem a little bigger on this, on these, but these are larger parts, so it shouldn't be a problem. Inject pin marks on the back, which is good. Nothing on the front here. We've got planking detail on the on the decks. That's good. And then the biggest sprue, looking here, the two ships halves, or the two hull halves. There's recesses for portholes, 
Um, let's, let's, uh, I'm not sure if that's a waterline going all the way across there or not. But that looks quite nice. There's yeah, recessed detail on there. Ship's decks, uh, scan more um, panel, more lines on there for the decks. Can eject a pin marks all on the back here. So it looks good. Looks, looks quite nice. Um, as you can see here, this is, what will this be? I'll measure it, but it's looking a little, about 25 centimeters long, something like that, about 10 inches or so. Um, so, that all looks good. So let's have a closer look at the parts and go through them step by step. The Pretoria was launched a few years before the start of the war and she was on the North American run uh, before the war and she was en route to uh, New York when the war started. So obviously she wasn't uh, captured by the Germans and nothing bad happened to her when Poland was invaded. Um, she's converted to a troop ship. I've looked around for photos of her of a troop ship and this is the only one I can find, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, she seemed to have a few sort of little mini conversions as the war went on, so her appearance changed slightly um, after each refit. Um, Mirage Hobby have her as she was at the time of the Sicily landings. Um, so basically this is placing this between the summer of 42 and uh, late summer of 43, so the fit is correct for that. Um, anyway, she uh, she survived the war and went back into passenger service after the war. Okay, so now a little bit of info about the kit itself. Originally, this was um, this kit came out in the mid mid nineties sometime, and was the motor ship um, Pilsudski. I hope I said that close to right, which was the sister ship of the Bittori. So it came out as that ship originally and also came out as the Victoria as an ocean liner as, as well. And then in 2014 is when this kit was released with basically two of the bigger original sprues. And there's also two more um, additional sprues with things that make it a troop ship, like all the extra boats that were needed for a troop ship to get the troops ashore and a couple of LCMs as well. Um, the sprues themselves look good um, the the level of detail is fair. There's some recessed portholes and uh, and lines on the side of the ship. The new sprues seem to have a lot of parts on them close together, with pretty solid um, sprue runners. So I'm sort of worried that sometimes getting the parts out of there, you might have to sort of take out a part of the main sprue to just sort of dismantle the sprue to get the small parts out. You know, which is fair enough. Um, overall looks good. All the screw attachment points seem fair. The, on the bigger parts they're bigger, on the smaller parts they're smaller. Um, Eject pin marks are all out the way and won't be seen when the kit is built. So just looking at the sprues, it looks pretty good. There's, I think it's 317 parts in total, I believe, which is a pretty fair parts count for a kit like this. Um, a lot of the kits, are to, a lot of the parts are to do with the all the extra small boats that are on the ship. Um, of all, the sprues look pretty good. Now we'll go through the instructions. We'll start off with the first page, the first eight steps, all using the new sprues, and basically add the parts that make this a troop ship. So steps one through six, we're adding small guns, six inch guns and smaller, uh, making lots of small sub-assemblies we're gonna add later. Steps seven and eight, we're building the LCMs, and we're building all these small ships that took the troops ashore as well. Now to the next page, which starts again with step eight. Step eight is one of the steps when we're working with the new sprues, and it's also one of the steps uh, of the original build of the ship. So there's sort of 14 steps, but there's two number eights, so it only goes up to 13. Anyway, step eight is where you would have started, I think, if you were building the ocean liner and you put the whole halves together, you put the stand together, and the propellers go on, and the fore and aft decks go on at this stage. There's some nice detail on the forecastle and on the decks in general. And then we move down to step nine, 
where we put the main part of the superstructure on, the funnels, and a couple of the assemblies that we made in steps one to eight from the from the new sprues. Now to step ten, and we're again we're adding small parts on the superstructure and a couple of assemblies that we made earlier. The LCM is included in, in this. A couple of what look like um, cargo area covers. And then we move down to step eleven, and again we're adding um, what looks to be a fair few of the um, gun assemblies that we made earlier. Ship's masts go on there. Also a couple of um, instructions there, the numbers in the red boxes, those are decals. And at the bottom we have colour guides, but I don't think you use these ones. I think these are the ones, this is what you'd have looked at if you're building the ocean liner. And then onto the last two steps, step 12. This is where you'd be doing, working with lots of fiddly bits. This is where all the ship's davits go on, or for the ship's boats and also the cranes for getting the LCMs on and off the ship as well. They all go on in this step, so there'll be a fair few of these to do. Then we go down to step 13, where we add the boats to the davits. Um, so quite whether you want to um, swap this around a bit and put the boats on their davits and then fit them as such onto the ship, or do it in the order they suggested, it is entirely up to you. We have the painting guide on a single sheet in colour. The colours are called out in Vallejo and life colour colours. There's also a piece of text describing what the colours as well. There's a small um, image showing you um, that there was a, a decal needs to be fitted if you're doing the ship up to July 13th 1943. Obviously they've worked at research and found that that, um, that figurehead was removed at that point. But this looks uh, pretty good. You can also see the, um, the flag is fitted. Notice that we get two sheets of decals. One thing I've kind of worked out is the larger sheet is what was used when she was an ocean liner. The smaller sheet is the only one that was used when she was a troop ship. So you've got some extra little decals to play with there. Um, in all, there seems to be plenty here and you should be able to get a painted without too much trouble, I think. Okay, an overall conclusion. Firstly, it's an interesting ship. I can't remember seeing one of these built anywhere, so it'll certainly um, be unusual and won't generate interest. The sprues seem okay. The older ones from the mid-90s kind of show their age a bit. Um, even the, the newer ones, um, which are a few years old now, seem a little thick in places. But overall, it's not too bad that you might have a bit of fiddly work getting the smaller parts off the new sprues but um, the level of detail overall is good I like the, the level of detail on the on the decks themselves on the superstructure looks pretty good um, there's definitely scope for adding more details to this look just look for some generic 1 500th scale like P railings you know for example things like that and be fine um, but I want it should be a nice interesting kit to build reasonably straight forward overall. Many thanks to Mirage Hobby for sending it along to us for us to have a look at.